right, thanks for watching this video. Welcome to Double Calendars Off the Rails. This video is gonna have two parts. We've gotten a ton of attention in the Option Omega community about double calendars. People come in, they start back testing them, they may start trading them, have success with them. And it's a concept that a lot of people have never really explored. It's it's a different kind of trade. It's very complicated compared to a simple credit spread or something more directional. So this video is gonna have part one. We're gonna craft a back test and try to make it more robust, more realistic. And then number two, we're gonna talk about what happens if DCs go off the rails and some of the risks with them because they are certainly not a risk-free trade even though they are a debit trade. So. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this back test and let's look at the good things. So the first thing is it's got a little bit of a time frame, right? You've got 115 data points here. So a, a, a decent collection of statistical sampling and it's got some fees and it's not really fitted at all. It's uh, just, you know, with double calendars, most people have a back test for each double calendar. It's not typically something where you trade the same double calendar every day, right? So. This is not fitted at all. It's got an entry time. It's just a normal time. It's not a news time. And other than that, yeah, I mean, it's got a couple things going for it. I do not like this back test though. This is missing quite a few things. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go into it and we're gonna punish it because the punisher, which is what we affectionately call the miscellaneous options settings, is your friend, especially with calendars. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add some slippage, right? So that's going to help both the entry and the exit and make them probably more realistic to life. And in the feedback, we've gotten five cents on a five seven is pretty common. Some people don't use slippage. We would suggest that you want to consider at least five cents. Some people use 10 cents for 20 delta. Five cents is probably appropriate. So the first thing, let's just run it at that. So while we're running that, the other things that we're going to want to do is that we're gonna to wanna to look at some of these profit settings under the Punisher, right? So the Punisher has, it has different ways that you can robustly refine your back test. So you can see slippage is just gonna make this worse, which is good, that's a better back test. Here's the other thing that we need to do. Under the Punisher, these two settings, cap profits and require two hits a profit target. So cap profits is pretty standard, it is, if you have a profit target, it functions like a limit order in the back test. And if you don't use it, you can get profits that are higher than your order. So if you're automating this in real time and just checking on one minute intervals, then maybe you don't want to leave cap non-opening profits at profit target. But if you're not automating it and only checking at one minute intervals, if you're using a standing limit order, you probably want to cap that. The other thing, which is even more important, is require two hits at profit target. Double calendars are extremely volatile four legs, got more Greeks than a Greek banquet. I mean, it's it's crazy. And so the Greeks are going all different directions and sometimes there's a weird price. So when you get two hits turned on, what happens is it will make sure that the price was legitimate the second minute as well as the first minute. It gets you out of the first minute. It just makes sure you didn't get a fake price. So we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna run this again. So right now, again, you can look at these metrics, Kager, Drawdown, Mar, these are, very important to look at, right? We want to contextualize why we use them. So right now we have we're, we have a ten percent allocation, which is probably more than people will trade. But be consistent with the allocation. If we're back testing it, we're going to keep that through until the end, until we're done refining it. We don't want to change the allocation and make refinements at the same time. So now this this is looking better. I'm feeling better about this. There's even one more thing we can do to this back test. Right now it's got 115 trades, 80. Actually, you know what it's missing? It is missing some rails. So let's put some rails on it. So DCs can lose typically two ways. The most common things that happen are number one, you have a blow by. So that's what this is going to deal with. So this is going to exit if you have a percent past the short put or the short call. Okay, so it's going to be a rail. This will probably make the back test a little bit better. Typically it does. That's a rail. You can also have a scenario where the profit pulls on the DC, which typically the most profit on a DC is that you are nearest one of the pulls uh, close to the expiration. Now that actually made it worse. And it made it, let's see. So I'm looking at the MAR, but I'm looking at some of these other things too, right? 
So what it did was it takes your CAGR down, but it also made your drawdown worse with the rails. So why could that be? Well, if you notice, it does its job in clipping the max loser. Right now, I'm just in the recent test runs flipping back and, and forth between the two. So I so that's good, right? It did it did its job with the max loser. And the average loser and the max loser are both smaller with the rails. Now, why it could be, why it could have done that is you have times when you have regression in DCs. So it may leave the profit area and go into very unprofitable zone. If you don't have a rail, you do give it time to come back. So we'll give it a little bit more room to run. It's still a lot of people feel like it's good to have some sort of rail on because what are you going to do if you're in a position? Here we go. This is this is this is maybe a um, a middle ground. So it still has a rail, but you're giving it more room to run. And if you look at these metrics, these are a lot closer. So with no rails, it's got an 8.4 percent drawdown, five and a half mar. With this one and a quarter rail you're very similar. It's got a, a MAR of 5.4 with a little bit less drawdown. So you're giving up CAGR, you're lowering your drawdown, which is why your MAR's lower, because your CAGR's lower, but this is probably a more robust backtest. This is a safer backtest. This is a way of keeping your DC on the rails, which is the point. Let's do something else. Because this is a 5.7, we have these fancy bubbles. These dates, October 22nd to present, are the XPX dailies. So that's when SPX started being traded every day. Because this is a 5.7 DC, it involves putting the trade on on a Friday, but it involves a Wednesday and a Friday expiration, which have been on the XPX chain for some time. So we're gonna make this backtest more robust with a larger data sample. And because we're using deltas and percents, out of the money for the rails, that gives us a back test which we can easily apply into other time frames. So as you can see, now the Mars lower, okay? Uh, the drawdown got higher. The CAGR is actually about the same, which that that's pretty interesting. This is a more robust back test. It's more robust, it has more data points. We could go, could go even further. We could even go back two years. And if you looked at it, both 2020 and 2021 were profitable. 2020, not as profitable, but 2021 was still a good year. So these other metrics like the CAGR, capture rate, et cetera, et cetera, will also give you information. It doesn't just have to be the MAR. Again, the MAR can be easily changed by just changing your allocation size. And typically what people do when they're workshopping a backtest is they'll pick their allocation to compare backtests. And then, here we go, so as you can see, this had one really, wow, actually 2018 had a very good year. 2020 is the only year that it kind of struggled, still still profitable. That's when its drawdown was though. So if you look at this, let's, let's take a step back. You've got a back test. I'm not worried about ending capital, starting capital. I'm not worried about all of that. What I'm worried about, capture rate. I'm, I'm worried about the win percentage. And I'm worried about these other metrics, right? You can export this data to a CSV, put it in Excel or Sheets or a spreadsheet program and get a bunch more metrics that you derive from it. Like if you want to get the sharp ratio and all, all these different things, you can do that. We provide you with enough to get you started here. And so what I am looking for is consistency over the years. It's been fairly consistent. This is about as average a year as it's had. Better than some. We're not done through the year, so probably pretty close to last year. Well, probably a little bit better than last year. Looks like it's going to be somewhat in the range of what 2019 was. So 319 data points and not overly fitted. We have some slippage. You can punish it, add more slippage if you want. You could further refine this. What a lot of people do is they'll take this and then they'll plug. So let's save this. So we're going to save this as a back test. I'll, I'll drop a link to this, this one here for you to play with and refine. As always, these back tests are a starting point. They're certainly not designed for you to plug in and start trading. They're designed to inspire you to create your own back test that makes sense for your situation. We could do additional things here. Like I would probably play with this entry time a little bit. 
I would try some different entry times. I mean, even try like a before power hour back test and see what that does to it. I would maybe try exiting a little bit later as well. We do have some rails on it, so it could handle a little bit later exit. You could add a vol crush option of a VIX or VIX 9 day moved percentage move down. Again, what that does is that measures from the time you put the trade on until the time you take it off, how vol moves. And so this is interesting. So you can see it made 2020 a little bit worse, but on the whole still, this kind of affirms the idea that, yeah, there's, there's a good concept here. There's something worth back testing, worth spending some time on. You, you still have a, you know, 8% capture rate. You're winning almost two thirds of the time where your winners are bigger than your losers, both your average and your maxes. You didn't significantly increase the drawdown a little bit. Kager's about the same. So I think there's definitely an idea here. So now that we've workshopped this a little bit, again, take the link, plug it into your OO and uh, see what you can come up with. We've already talked about the two ways that DCs most commonly can lose, but just a review. If you have too much movement, especially early on in the trade, what will happen is your shorts will become too valuable compared to the longs and that can cause the trade to lose. You can also have a tent side condition, which is more common later on in the time frame, which is where your shorts lose value, but vol is crushed and the t profit tent sags. That's where the expression comes from, tent sag. The longs lose even more than the shorts lose, and that's a vol crush. So those are two very common ways. Those are the two most common ways that DCs typically lose. We should also talk about the less common risks that are still definitely possible and definitely need to be understood if you're going to trade a double calendar live and not just look at it in a back test. So hypothetically, when you put a DC on in a broker, they will put the minimum value at zero. That's how brokers do it hypothetically. That the risk, it's a debit trade, you have a long that's worth more than a short, so their hypothetical min value for it is zero. However, in practice, and this happened in the beginning of August, you can have an event where if the shorts experience too much volatility, you may have to pay a debit to close the trade. Indeed, you could have to pay a debit to put the trade on and a debit to take the trade off. That could happen. The other, even less common thing, but still possible, is understanding that a black swan could have a very outsized impact on a DC. We had a very lively discussion this past weekend on the Option Omega Discord about this, and indeed, even the concept of a double black swan was raised, where if there's a market event and the market is shut down for a period of days, maybe something geopolitical, maybe something U.S. politics related, you could have a very extreme happening to the DCs. Again, you have a short. Now, you have a short strangle, which is offset by a long strangle. So again, that's why hypothetically the brokers model them as their min value of zero. But in a black swan or a double black swan event, you could experience something other than that. So black swans don't happen a lot. That's why they're black swans. They're rare. But it is important to at least consider this. If you're thinking about going beyond backtesting and actually trading some DCs, it's important to kind of have an understanding of what some of the different possibilities are. And as a final note, a couple more resources for you, a free resource from Option Omega on various double calendar ideas and backtests and discussions is on our YouTube channel. You should subscribe to it. You're watching it right now, so just hit subscribe. Here's a video in your video, one of the videos we have on double calendars. So there are multiple videos on our YouTube channel that you can continue to research. Another good resource is on Option Omega Academy. We actually have a class on calendars, and this is on a dynamic calendar spreads that has a lot of the concepts of calendar spreads explored. This is taught by Steve from navigation. And if you're interested in learning more, there is a seven minute video academy.optionomega.com. Again, this is a paid class. We also have a ton of discussion and many, many hundreds of shared back tests on the Option Omega Discord. You can just click on our homepage and join the Discord that way. So a couple resources for you if you wish to continue your calendar learning journey. Thanks for watching this video. Have a good one.